Hello friends, thank you for watching this video. I'm Muhammad, and today we're gonna be discussing two functionalities in C-sharp that you may not have known about. So let's get started. So first of all, I'm gonna be creating a console application which we can actually utilize to experiment or add, introduce into these new features. I'm gonna put the plant new console, and give it a name of sample app. And I'm gonna navigate to it and open it in Visual Studio Code. Okay, perfect. So now I have it in Visual Studio Code. I'm gonna start first by discussing, the first one is gonna be pattern, matching. So the easiest way it's going to explain is going to be creating a classification function for temperature. So is the function that we're going to be building. So first of all, I'm going to put static. It's going to return a string and I'm going to say weather classification. And all we're going to take is, let's say, take a double, which is going to be the temperature itself. Okay, great. And then all I'm going to be doing here in order for me to make this compliant, I'm going to put return temp and I'm going to have a switch statement. And this switch statement is going to contain all of the different uh, matching, pattern matching that I want to do. And we're going to basically take it pretty straightforward. I'm going to have three different types of matching and a default one. So I'm going to say if the temperature between zero, actually, if it's going to be less than zero and higher than 50, we're going to say out of range. And we're going to say if it's between zero, zero and 15, nice weather, 15 to 30, warm. And the last one, I'm going to say if it's going to be 30, 40 gonna be hot and the default one I'm gonna say not available something like that so let's see how we can implement this pretty straightforward so let's start with this one so I'm gonna say if my temperature is less than zero or it is bigger than 50 I'm gonna be returning an out of range response so that's gonna be the first one second I'm gonna handle this one so I'm gonna say if it's gonna be equal or bigger than zero and it is less than 15 or equal to 15 I'm gonna return a nice water then for 15 to 20 to 30 I'm gonna also do it bigger than 15 and less than 30 I'm gonna return warm weather and lastly I'm gonna say if it's gonna be bigger or equal to 30 and less or equal to 40 I'm gonna say this is gonna be hot weather and lastly the default one oops I forgot the commas here so let me add the commas and the default one at the end is going to be underscore. So in case there's no matching at all, I'm going to return not available. So just to make sure that we do not mess anything up, I'm just going to do a direct dot not build. So dot not build. And we can see I have something which I missed. And it could be the semicolon here. I forgot to add it. It's always something small. Dot not build. Okay, perfect. Everything is building. So let us experiment with it. And uh, let me create my first output. So I'm just going to put a simple here is console dot right line. And we're going to call this method weather classification and I'm gonna pass the simple the temperature of let's say 12 and I'm gonna run this so dot not run and as we can see here I got nice weather so what happened here so basically what we're doing here is we're utilizing pattern matching within our switch statement in order for us to do this matching so instead of having case and then for every single case we'll put our condition and then based on that we're returning we're utilizing pattern matching on the input for our switch in order for us to be able to do so so whatever this is a simple function that I created but here is basically what we're doing is we're doing those pattern matching and I'm able to utilize the or and the and in order for me to specify the conditions that I want to do within this pattern matching in order for me to get back the response that I want and this is called pattern matching because I'm actually able to create different patterns within my code in order for me to get the output that I want so this feature could be cool if you're for example you're trying to do some kind of a, a long if else statement or for example if you have a range of numbers that you want to compare uh, or basically you have different conditions that you want to make sure that you are abiding by pattern matching which is introduced within c sharp 9 is a very cool way to actually accomplish it so this is the first one so let's try with a different examples so let's try a few so i'm gonna basically create different inputs so i'm here for example i'm gonna put uh, minus 30 this is gonna be 75 degrees here i'm gonna say it's gonna be 34 this is gonna be 20. So let's run them. So again, I'm gonna open my terminal and I'm gonna put dot .not run. Let's clear this up, dot .not run and run this. And we can see here that the minus 30 and 75 out of range. The first one we got a uh, nice weather. It's hot for 34 and 20 is warm weather. Okay, perfect. So now we know all of the conditions are being met and everything is working as it should be. So that's the first point that we wanted to discuss today. The second one is gonna be range operators. So I'm just gonna command these out and I'm just gonna add here the topic that we're gonna be covering, which is gonna be range operators. Let me close my terminal. Okay, so for range operators, we're going to be doing the following. So I'm going to have a simple array, which kind of contains certain numbers, right, let's say from 0 to 9. So int numbers equal, and here I'm going to put 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, and 9. So basically, I'm going to have this array uh, of different numbers, and I'm going to be utilizing the range operators, so we can see how we can actually extract information out of this array in a very cool way. The first one we're going to be discussing, the last index. So how can I get the last index 
of my array in a very cool way. So I'm just going to define an index here and I'm going to say last index equal to this icon here. I'm going to say one. And now if I would do a console dot right line for numbers with my index sorry last index and i run this let's see what are we gonna get so let me clear this up and dot dot not run oops i forgot to add the semicolon again let's try this again and we can see i was able to get nine so let's run it again and as you can see i got nine because basically this range operator will tell C sharp that I, it needs to actually access the last one. So that's the first item that I wanted to do. So that's the first one within the range operator, which is actually very cool. The second one is if I want to get, for example, the range between three and seven or five and seven, how can I get only that? How can I tell C sharp that only get me the numbers between these two ranges? Pretty easy as well. So let's see. I'm going to say here it's going to be range of numbers and I'm going to say range. Let's say I'm going to be from uh, four to seven equal four to two uh, dot dot and then i'm gonna say eight so what i want to do is i'm gonna create a new array to get this information out i'm gonna call var new selection you can call it whatever i want equal number four to seven and all i'm gonna do is here console dot actually let's do a for loop for x int x equal zero and x is less than new selection dot count x plus plus and all i'm gonna do here is console right line new selection and i'm gonna pass the x here and now let's see what is the output's gonna be so dot not run we can see here let's forget about the first one we were able to get the range of four to seven without actually eight so this element here this range it will start it will actually include the one that we have here but it will ignore the last element so it will be anything which is less than eight so this will say basically it is four to seven but we're not gonna say seven here because it will ignore the last one so we need to make sure it's eight so it's always gonna be the last item that the last index that we want plus one in order for us to make sure that this range is work so this is going to be the second one, how we can actually utilize it. We're basically utilizing the dot dot and the dot dot basically will get us the range. And let us not forget about the last item here, which needs to be the index plus one. Perfect. And the last one that we're going to be discussing, let's see how we can get actually the last three elements of an array without actually doing this work manually. So I'm going to create a new array and I'm going to call array last elements. I'm going to say equal to number because that's the array that I want. I'm going to specify this hat. Uh, icon and I'm gonna say I want everything past three because basically I want the last three elements and I need to put dot dot so let's see how this will work I'm gonna take the same for loop as we have done before I'm just gonna update it here last element last element and now let's print it out and see what do we have let me comment these out so we're not really overwhelmed with the output and let me comment this out as well and now let's run this so dot not to clear first sorry clear first and then dot not run and now as you can see within this selection i basically told my array that please select the last three element of it which is going to be seven eight nine and i was able to actually save them to a new array and store them so these basically range operators allow me to have a much more flexibility when i'm dealing with an array when i'm dealing with a large list it will allow me to actually fetch the information from my list based on my need i hope these two features were helpful it's just something that i thought uh, everyone uh, who's uh, doing any c sharp programming will benefit from if you have any questions or if you have any extra tips and tricks please mention them in the comments down below or if you want some want me to cover any of them please let me know in the comments i will make sure to have a video to cover this if you'd like to support me please consider supporting me on patreon or buying me a coffee thank you very much for watching and have a great day